now we are going to talk about um, SAP standard invoice reporting transaction codes so first we have to search start with something for PO invoice non PO invoices and we'll go through each first important transaction that you want to understand is there is a transaction called uh, FBL 1N that's the bread and butter for AP okay and if you don't have open text product when you invoice management you will have this for sure so here we will show this is the transaction where you can know whether uh, when whether a uh, uh, invoice has been entered parked posted uh, whether it has been uh, uh, paid and all those things so here you can define it open key date clear date all items so here you have to give the vendor number and account number so we'll just execute and we'll see if there is some activities for this vendor or not okay so what we can do it might have some activities so because it's list being generated so anything which is red that means it's the status is open that means we haven't paid anything which is green is the ones that we have paid okay the status is cleared cleared means there would be a clearing document number okay so this is very important now here you might be having cases where you want to see the po number and all those things so in order to see po numbers and all those things you have to go here you hit the change layout screen and you have to bring in some some field it's hidden now by default sap have though they have purchase order number though it will not show here okay so we will just see number schedule by nine check number probably is there purchase order number nope so it's hidden somewhere so let me see we'll go into change layout again and we'll see suppose we wanted clearing date posting date you want to have uh so where we'll find the purchase order what is purchasing purchasing p o r c h yeah purchasing document oh, sap something the number so here you have copy so you will see so these are all 17 numbers that means it's a non po so you don't never have a purchasing document number since it doesn't didn't clear it will not have a clearing document number so here now if you see <coughs> this has the clearing the purchase order number now you might say you might have problems and you will have problems if you haven't done a user exit a business transaction event you will not have this document there so in order to know why a bystander sap didn't populate this value for some reason because there can be confusion or there's additional code implementation that they have to do so if this field is not populated it's generally not populated in any company i have worked till the in the last 15 years it's never populated and the first thing the client ask and every time they will ask is this field is there but it's not populated make it populated so you have to select you have to create an enhancement to do this so in order to create an enhancement you have to put some code in it so what we can show you is what is the code we have to do first you have to implement a business transaction even this is something you need a person who is an abapper who can do it okay so i'll show you the piece of code that we have done and uh, there would be z and it would be something well let me see uh there is a portion where z 1650 well, what was it the interface this is the this is a business transaction event that we had to implement to get this working is this the one yes this is the one so if you see here we had to put some code here okay this is the piece of code now you might say oh 
uh, we'll just put a debug point and just to make sure this really works okay this really is getting called because by default this doesn't get called so what we are going to do is we put a debug point here okay uh, and now we are just going to go hit uh, the back button and we'll execute and it stops in the debugging so let me close some of the sessions i don't want lots of sessions to be created uh, switch to standard debugger and here if you see here uh, by default this value is empty okay so if you see i'm putting the value where is it i'm putting the value here ebln this is empty okay so what i'm going to put is we are going to search for uh, po we'll search where there would be some entry here uh based on this key okay so we can do like this uh, this will stop here oops hit the wrong button i didn't hit f8 so it stopped here and it will not stop here it, there is no value because this is a 17 number or some different number so what we can do is we can save we can just see we will see what is there in this so it comes calls every now and then so we'll just pick we'll just pick when this number so we are now putting a watch point just to make sure that the value comes from here so what we do we'll create a watch point and we'll put this this is not equal to something like this this foot and we'll execute and we want to see uh, this one is not good just close this we hope it will stop the watch point well the watch point has stopped so if you see this is the po number that got generated so we'll see so here is the piece of code that you have to put in order to know whether this PO is working or not. And you know, the smartest way is to do debugging. And to get the debugging, you have, uh, we have already, uh, we have a, we have already a course in the tutorial available in another course. So you should check that. Debugging is very important. Whether you are technical, oh, that's your bread and butter. If you are functional, that's one of your feathers that will help you to grow very strongly and help the project implementation a lot so this shows this one so what i'll do uh we here i'll just delete this now i'm done with the watch point and i'll just save it and i'll do f8 and we'll see so by default again the purchasing document is not there you have to bring it in you can save it so this is one purchasing we know now the number and if we bring it in you can see this is the purchasing and the clearing date tells you when it was cleared means when it's getting paid okay so so this is these so based on this the color is very important now you might want to know hey i want to know the check information and all those things so in order to know check informations I think you can check check information from here uh, so if i click here here check see yeah, if there is a check so if i click on check i hope there is no check there's no check because it's based on the payment terms so if the if payment method if the payment method is different which is different here in this case it will be different so 
if it's the payment method do we have a payment method somewhere here payment method probably yes you can see as that helps uh, payment method supplement is here uh, do we have another one payment method yep you have the payment method and if we bring it in and we can see whether it says any C so if you see there's E all the Z's are the payments okay so we don't have any C's here so that's 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 very and I think you can bring in the check also check information C H E C K check number so from there you also you know whether this have a check or something so we're just copying it and again if you want to store this information you want to get it as your default so there was some checks oh see there's checks we missed it so this is these are the check information it's pretty helpful now if you want to save it you just uh, click on this save button and I will recommend you to make it user specific and put something I'll put my name Arka and I'll try to save it and it will be saved it's my default layout so every time I hit the back button and uh, oops it didn't get saved probably I don't have authorization so let me see do I have something okay I'll make it user specific and can I make it default somewhere I think I can make it default on the front end uh, no I don't want to save this okay it's completely oops let's go uh, select layout layout was applied but there is nothing they have changed so let me go and change it first again so it can get saved so let's close here we'll bring in purchasing document PURC and lots of times it doesn't get saved it's not your fault security has screwed you up so they play the cat and mouse game the Tom and Jerry game with you sometimes so here we'll put check and check uh, check information and that's it we'll copy it we'll save it we'll put it save good luck we saved it now here in the down you can put a layout here i put this layout okay and i execute now voila you see what i did so you can learn about how to see here you have the check information and all those things now we'll do some changes and we'll bring in some flag whether it's marked for deletion and all those things so let me go and first bring in those flags before i show you okay so there's this flag block this turning block I don't really need this payment block uh, I don't need these two fields is added custom and we'll add it copy and if you see this description vendor block and this is vendor posting block now what we are going to do we'll do the same thing save save yes sir now this is done now what we are going to do is we'll <clears throat> mess up this vendor there's lots of time vendors gets messed up because the vendor master team didn't didn't have the information and trust me it happens all the time so that's why you want to you want to put uh, checks or warning messages where the vendor master team sees what they're doing before they change okay so here is the business partners so this is the transaction where you have to go in s4 hana if it was in ecc6 you would have gone to xk0 team so here what we are going to do we are going to search with the supply number i know the supply number this is the supply number 
I think it's already there. It was open. So like SAP keeps most of the stuff. Now what we have to do is we're going to change here stuff. We're going to change mode. Once we are in change mode, here we can put a delivery block. Okay, if I put a delivery block, okay, and I save it. Once I save this delivery block, Just put a delivery block here, it gets saved. Now, if I run this transaction, one of these fields will turn into X. Okay, so we'll do the same. So, uh, here you can sometimes you can save it as a layout, you can save it as this as a variant, and you can always run this variant. Uh, let me see whether it gets whether it stores the history because I want to see the layout probably can be stored as a history so it stores as a history that's the smart thing about SAP is the history portion that's what everything everyone is going right machine learning data uh, big data AI is all based on data history okay if you don't have history mm -hmm, they can't do anything so here if I run this okay you see all these have turned x okay now you might say oh, oh you turned x something you did now we'll turn it flip it back hey something is wrong someone is yelling so what we are going to do is we are going to put this back we'll save it okay once we have saved it now it's corrected ap is happy vendor is happy everyone is happy they want to pay these invoices okay so now it's turned back so this is something that you have to customize it and we have to build it in uh, in in the system that's what i showed there are some steps to do don't if you are functional you will not be able to do i'm sorry you will not get a developer access key to develop and it's always good to assign it to an abapper who really knows the system there's some steps you have to do before you do all these things so this is important so uh, the so this this is the most important transaction for for um, so if you notice this this shows only the red ones because I ran it open items if I want only clear items it will only show everything green it's based on what you want okay so lots of times this is very 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 handy now lots of times it may happen that the vendor doesn't ask you uh, he doesn't know anything about the vendor doesn't know anything about your what's the invoice number and all those things they really only they if if at all they know anything is they know about their reference number so what we are going to do is we'll show you what they will query you and how you will find it in your sap system so here is the reference number so they will only know this number okay suppose uh, now how can you query based on this let's see whether we can query on this with the reference number okay so created by vendor created by alternate pay like search term nope paying in document company code reconciliation what is i'm looking down because i'm looking for the reference number there is reference number never knew it it's coming so if i put this one if i put f8 now oh that's it you got it so i can bring in the reference number here and we can select reference invoice reference bring it back here i want that thing i probably i want it early rather than so i'll change it and i don't want to put it here probably i want to bring it up so if you want to put it up you the only way you can put it i think you can drag it and I drag it uh there should be a way i can oh i can change it so this would be now 10 
plus root 10 it adjusts itself so here is the reference number this is very helpful because there are lots of times the the person who is referencing who is asking you the question the vendor he knows his key which is the in the primary key which is the invoice reference number so you can just go here bring in this reference number field which is way down way down way down can i bring it up a little and i can put payment method reference um, and here you can just put it let me see whether we can lift it up and here you can put multiples can you imagine this is this is one of the greatest thing you can do so you can do a lot of things here you have posting key text code entry date and all those things so this is this really helps you out in finding on querying whether this is paid or not it's through this 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 field the vendor reference number is always there okay so this really helps and there are other things based on your things the amount in local currency the actual amount so this this points you this takes you to exactly what you need so this is very helpful and you should be using fbl one in but again as i said some of the fields are not available so you might want to uh, implement the code uh, and if you have a custom requirement to implement codes then you we, then you have to then we have to check it now lots of times um, uh, there can be issues uh, where I, i'm thinking what can what what will be a good field that you want to add in fbl 1n that you can refer to okay so that would be something that is uh, unique something that is helpful mm. on the vendor side you want the pay method no. you want the service entry sheet that's a little tricky um whether the vendor whether the po is an invoicing plan po probably that would be nice because that will tell you where whether that particular but again based on the based on the doc type you you sometimes know whether it's an invoicing plan PO or not. Uh, there are other way we can, I was, I'm thinking what, what would be something that would be very beneficial for, for an invoice. We cannot give you the cost center because it's in the document level. It's in the line level. I'm thinking of something that you can do in the header level uh, that is pretty useful. What, what another portion can be you can put is the vendor mark for deletion is very important uh there was something whether the payment supplement comes up or not if we one and let's see payment supplement was there i think mm, let's see we'll bring it in okay uh so we have these things uh we'll see whether the payment supplement is there payment supplement supplement s u p p payment method supplement is there sales document um the discount amount this is important sometimes where you have discounts uh you want the j you want the blocks also so you have discount amounts and all those things you can put so now case one i was thinking something that you can uh, think of which really helps you vendor mark for deletion this was a custom one the po was a custom one uh, uh, another thing another one can be the type of po whether it's an uh, give me the doc type uh, let's see whether we have a doc type purchasing doc type probably we don't have it and then we, we can show how you can add the purchasing doc type field so let's see we have a doc type field doc doc type uh, document type pure doc type nope 
document status is there sales document item sales that's a lot of document we have no we don't have a doc type field so we have this vendor field that will bring it in and that will help us so this is the vendor field so what we are going to do is we are going to show how we can add a doc type field also so we'll see how it works so first thing is we go here uh, we go to the structure and this is this is the client where you have you cannot uh, code so we are going to go and code it in another system so we'll see how it how it goes so we go here and we'll put one this is the development system we'll login and first thing we are going to do is we are going to extend this this structure oops so the structure is rf pos f7 that's our bread and butter we go here we'll find a uh, app and structure again this is something that your developer will do and since i'm one i'm a developer uh, i can do this so i'll go and find which is the po doc type so this is the table for po ekko and there would be something called purchasing document type so this is the field i want esart and i'll just put it here and i'll just put p i'll put uh, Start and I'll put types one and I'll put this so purchasing document type this is my new field I want and I'll put it as create at doc type and I'll put this as save and this is my transport okay now what I'm going to do is this is one place I have to change. I have to change another place. Uh, this is one RFPOS and there's another one extend, I think. Oops, this is it. This is it. So now I'll go here and I'll put some code. So if you remember, I know the function model. So what I'm going to do is see 37. I think I have to change somewhere else. My gut feeling is telling me. So let's go here because I think there is another place we have to change. I'll go here. And this is the place. Uh, this is the table also I have to change. So let's see. Uh, here. I'll go here. SE 11 steps. This is another one. Go and so this is automatically generated so i don't need to change this good but this this gets affected so now what we are going to do is we'll find the code so i'll go to se 37 okay i already know the po numbers so i'll go here i'll change add po doc type where is my code so here I know this and after this we'll just put another one at PO doc type and we'll put this once here and we will now write the code so it's simple we are going to put select single bsart into i put the same same field name this as bsart bsart and i'll put this check if this important thing is you need to put filters okay so if you don't put filters is not initial that means the po is populated it's a po invoice from ekko where 
ebln equals same thing and I'll put and if and I'll activate it it will get activated soon and now what I have to do is so this is what we just had to do but when you are implementing in the system you have to run another program to extend that that structure that we just see we have just seen here uh, you see the structure that gets generated you need to run a program so this is our actual system where we are going to test so what we are going to do is go to slash n se 38 and we are going to just extend this one and we'll just click execute and we'll say yes it's happened it and it's done well now let's see now our testing may work it may not work so we'll go back hit the back button completely go out and we are going to go to the same transaction fpl one in bread and butter very happy and we are going to execute okay and uh, then what we are going to do is we are going to go and change layout and we will say type let's see i don't know what it's called we need to watch out flow type follow on document type offsetting document type so what was it called so here if we see document document currency document status error text usage so let's see let first see whether that got extended mm, we go to csd 130 and we want to see it's there or not okay so it's bsart Probably it's called something else. It's CSD 130. Probably it will now show up. BSART. Was it BSART? Yes, BSART. You see, BSART is there. It's called purchasing document type. Oof. Now we are going to see the other other structure. So we'll create a session. Just want to make sure it's there. Uh, and we'll see B sort. It's not there. Z block. We're there. So it's there, but it's not there. So we might have to execute it here also. Didn't extend. Program completed successfully. So let's see whether it will show now. And we will see uh, this one. And we are in 130. Can we see 130? Yep, here it is. I'll go back. Display. B start. Still not there. Okay, so let's see. Probably I need to do it in this also. Well, it gets stored here as C38. Uh, slash n. C38. Extend. Yes. So this ran successfully. Now we'll run it here also again. and now we are going to check check this and we will see what happened now uh let's see so we hit the back button f7 
B sat. Still not there. Oops. Mm, something is wrong. So we'll see vendor line item details. We'll hit the back button. Execute. And we'll hit purchasing P U R C H. P U R C H. So it's still not there on this side. Sometimes it takes some time. So we'll see. Extend. Okay, RFPOSX. Uh, we have to extend this one also. That was the mistake we did. So let's fix this now. POSX also. You have to add it here for longer amount fields. And we'll put Z. Z block. We have it here. You see, it's missing here. So I would I have to add it here also. We'll go to change mode. Put B start here. That was a mistake we did. And we put E start. Activate. Voila. Should work now. So now execute. So it says, you see, we're just not looking. So now program completed successfully. Let me see. Did it get activated? Or I was doing too fast. So log out this way. We can see. Now we can see FBL1N and we can execute this now. Now here we didn't have any. Let's see. We'll just clear because clear that five one documents. So now change. We know what to find P U R C H. Wow, we got it. We got it. And here we are. Here is the verdict. Here we are the doc types. We got the doc types here. You see this NB. So now what we can do is we can just save it. That's it. So what we learn is not only the reporting, how to change the reporting. And trust me, 100% of the companies that have SAP will have SAP FI and 100% of them will require a new field, all these fields in FBL1N. And this is your way to go. We had to extend two structures and run the program and of course code something, how to find the data and we did it. And this is really helpful. And trust me, once you are in any project and you are working as an app upper or as, a, or as an FI person or any functional, this will be required and that will be helping you. Um, this this is worth a lot of dollars, just to, just to let you know. This is very helpful. So this is one transaction that you will use. The same transaction you can do for FBL3N. So there is something which is the GL view. So if you go to GL, and I don't really know. I'll just try it wide open. Oops, I shouldn't have done. Well, the list is being generated because I don't have a GL account to play with. That's why the, I'm trying to get this. So list is being generated. One other, one important thing about S4HANA is the fast thing. It's very fast, but since it's going through thousands and thousands of lines, it's a little slow, but it will be fast. So once I get a GL account number, I can run it. So let's see. Oops, still the list is being generated. Uh, uh, probably, probably what I could have done is let me find it out. ME23N. I'll get this GL probably. It will give me some data out. So whenever you're stuck and you want to stop something, you cannot stop from here. All everything is disabled. The only way to stop is click here. You can create a new session, new GUI window in S4HANA. It used to be create new session in ECC6. 
or you stop transaction it stops your trade device so now we are going to put something fvl3n and execute and now you see all these details now we want to see whether this purchasing document also shows here well they don't need purchasing but you know we want to brag about what we built probably it will not work because i didn't put that code also there so it's the doc type is there but if you see you might say hey this is not working uh the purchasing document type because probably there's some checks we have done okay so that's the reason it's not working for this um and we don't really need it in fpl3 and so it works for the five ones the five ones is also not working so how we can say uh, why it's not working so let's do one thing uh, we will debug okay as i said debugging is the bread and butter for uh, a vapor and it can be a very important tool for a functional person so so what we are going to do oops i made a mistake it should be sc37 i'll put a debug here debug point in our code uh just want to make sure uh i think we have some okay that's the reason it didn't work because i'm pretty sure this code is used down here because it's doing a check on the program so yeah that's the place so i need to put the code here also hmm. well at pure doc type there was here and it's somewhere here also 77 no it's, uh, there and there so i didn't find it well you can just put a deep breakpoint here and we can see let's close one session and we'll run this okay execute oops this didn't stop okay oh now let me see oops this is not the place did i put a breakpoint somewhere probably not yeah probably here put a breakpoint here and i'm going to execute this stopped now so if you see the program name is different fight mgl so i need to put that code there also so if i see i'll just check this is my thing whether this is populated it's not populated but probably it gets populated later on post app ebln or oh, i just check where it's getting populated it gets populated later on but this is a clearing document so what we can do is we can do the same thing my right? post app and we'll put a watch point create watch point this one ebln and we'll say uh, not equal to one two three four five six seven eight nine ten oops and we'll say enter watch point we'll put execute watch point reached so now i think this ebln has a value nope not yet let's see did the watch point reached it didn't reach yet it doesn't have a value so probably the watch point is declared wrongly uh, watch points let's change it oh i made a mistake should be e b e l n my bad so we saved it now we execute so now we see 
the document is not there probably it gets re recovered from somewhere else so we'll see purchasing document to do again this one gets stored see the the copy so here the purchasing documents so that they get the purchasing document here but not in that not in that portion so that's so in that place in that particular place we don't have the purchasing document so we cannot get it there so that's the problem mm. so but this is another place fpl3n you can use it uh, so we can see uh, the other stuff whether if you put the block whether the block shows so you will put search with block and we can check the same thing that we checked the previous one not payment block we are going to check this too vendor block copy uh, and we'll save it uh, these are the blocks and uh, what I'm going to do and from here also you can click on the document this will not have anything it's generally the clearing documents which will have some data in it so it's probably this tax accrual probably will have some checks or something so now what we are going to do is we are going to go to bp here and we'll put this block again so let's put the block we are now becoming blocking specialist so we'll put the block it's blocked now we are going to first save this transaction uh, let's create the same layout we created user specific um, we have done this layout it saves and again we are going to go here we'll put our layout name which is my name and here now it's x now what we are going to do we are going to change this because when the master screwed it up someone correct realized it they told hey you need to fix it it was x now the good the thing that uh, you don't really need you don't have a refresh button here somewhere you can oh yeah we have oh we have a refresh button so we didn't have a refresh button it's amazing you don't have it in the in the icons so you have a refresh button here so so it's now gone so this covers everything that is very important about fpl 1n fpl 3n that's a bread and bread and butter for ap for anyone who wants to uh, check on invoices whether it's paid or not through fpl 1n we saw by based on the reference number you can find it out very 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 handy so this is important now we'll just touch base on some other transaction since invoice is something related with procurement and others and you have PO invoices this is something you want to know there's some transaction that you want to know so, uh, is uh, just checking this transaction me2 which uh, me2l so me2l it tells you purchase orders by PU supplier purchase order by PO so we'll just check supplier means nothing but vendor master okay so you can put the vendor you can put the suppliers and you know whatever purchase order you have okay here you can see PO histories so if you click on one and you click on PO histories choose one line and it takes you to the PO history and all those things so it's pretty 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 handy mm, and it tells you what are the changes uh, choose a line yeah you want to change that's why it takes you so it tells you delivery schedules and all those things another important thing that that has changed in s4 hana is simplification of finding what is the status of payment it's not every time you are going to have bill one in and knowing everything so one important thing that s4 hana did is there was a table called bsec that everyone knows in s if you know sap you know bsec 
and you will know vwag vweb and vsec vsec you will know for sure because this is one table where you have all the data but you cannot read it because it used to be a cluster table so now in s4 hana it has changed it's called it's not a cluster table the now you might want to say what the heck you are talking about cluster table or not before in s4 ha in ecc6 this they had something else it's called cluster table which you cannot read if you read it goes for a toss and you have to read through all the perform all the key fields key fields means all the primary key now it has changed now what happens is i'll show you the difference is i'm going to ecc6 which is this is a ecc6 environment which is not s4 hana and the i'll show you one major difference that has happened in s4 hana so you go to vseg and you go i'm going in se11 i'm going to vseg and if i go here it says it's a cluster pool table so that's it you couldn't use it now you can use it to read easily now the greatest thing about s4 hana another thing they have done is there's a table called AC Docker. There are other tables that they have created like Mad Doc and other places, but AC Docker is very important. So this is is not AC. This is this is another table they have built AC Docker, where you can you can do queries based on your payment and all those things. So here, if I have, let me see what is the reference number, because I want to use the reference number we were trying to find reference number there would be something awf reference document number no no we want reference document number reference procedure vendor reference number so suppose you want invoice reference this is what we want reps check okay i'll bring it back again this is german okay you don't want to see these things you can go user parameters and click on field level you're back in english or in any local language you have you have, you want to see so here is the invoice reference number now we'll go and try to find uh, suppose i'm doing a query i can do a bill one in okay and you remember we did based on the reference number so I'll go scroll down where is my reference number uh did i not move it or did it not save it so here there would be reference number hmm. spell is there so here when a master where was it probably missed it the problem here is you don't have a find so reference business <clears throat> here no wonder so we have this reference number and we are going to search with this there we'll see whether it works or not well it didn't work so the inverse reference number probably it will show in some fields so if i run this no items to display well we just took something else probably document number reference number was this the number that we used yeah probably or probably it changed because uh let me take probably the company code out and so it should be another field that we used so let's see branch account posting oh i know what's the problem because i'm doing with open items so it needs to be all items then it will show <laughs> well, i want to stop so here it shows so let's search with this 
we're doing some reverse engineering and we'll search there and I'll take this off and we'll see whether it shows there so I put document number I'll put the company code which was six and we put the fiscal year I know and I do f8 <clears throat> so you want to see did it did it have the reference number oh here is the reference document number guess what I was looking at the wrong field so reference document number was here I could have searched it here nope not this one I know this is not the one save it I'll put it here it's this reference number so let me go here active come on move this was the one so I could search here also and I'll put nothing another here and we'll just execute and we'll see here you can find so this was very simple this is the way if you want to get it from the table is very useful but there's something not everything can be done uh, like if you want to see the payment block that field is not there so in order to see the payment block of how you can get the payment block you can always create a query which we did here and i'll show how how we build the query so it's a zap block it's a simple query where you can do uh, a join so i'll show how it was built okay so here if you see this is display and this was the most important part is the join so if you see this is a table join where i used bsec which will, which you could not use in ecc6 the thing i'm showing you now uh, you might say oh i don't believe you well we'll see sqvi will do okay and we'll see ap get i'll just create one okay and i'll put a test test and i'll say table join and we'll just do this and we'll put b seg here and we'll see an error message cannot be used in join so this is the main one of the biggest well, one of the biggest thing that has changed in s4 hana is b seg you can use as a join and it can be used heavily the reason we used bseg again because we wanted payment block payment block is not available in ac docker table so that's the reason so you define the joining condition and now you define the selection fields and all those things now if i execute and i say hey show me something which is blocked so it will tell you which are the stuffs which are completely blocked so if you see these are the blocks that we have for different different invoices so that uh, this covers everything about standard sap invoice reporting so sap invoice reporting what we covered is important transaction is fbl 1n fbl 3n we also showed how we customized fbl 1n we added doc type and that was an ABAP as well as functional requirement and we saw it how we did it by extending two structures and then running a program and of course coding for that and it was uh, then we learned about new features bseg is no more uh, a cluster table and you can use it heavily in s4 hana and there's a new table called ac docker that has a lot of instructions and we also found through FBL1N that you can reference by the reference key and it works wonders.